but you know, in terms of seizing the bulge quickly, you know, because it's 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 been long coming, as it were, you know. <laughs> long. <laughs> dear oh dear. Yeah. Hello and welcome to rewriting bad books, and today we are going to look at the Bad Sex Awards 2019. Oh and and taking it very seriously, and I'm always taking it very as, seriously. Yeah, as usual, we'll be mm. taking this extremely seriously. Yeah, <clears throat> and we'll have a thirty-minute whinge about why it's rubbish. <laughs> then we will present to you our offerings, and of course, pick a winner ourselves while leaving it open for you to comment mm. on which one you prefer. And also, if you want, have a go yourself. Have a go at your own ones. So the Bad Sex mm. Award couldn't decide between these two passages, mm. and the first is by. D.A. De Coyne, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. And second is by John Harvey. Mm-hmm. Neither of whom are necessarily lightweights mm. of literature. So it's a, all the more embarrassing that they should <laughs> screw up like this. So I'm going to read the first one. Yeah. Katsuro moaned as a bulge formed beneath the material of his kimono. A bulge Miyuki seized, kneaded, massaged, squashed and crushed. With the fondling, Katsura's penis and testicles became one single mound that rolled around beneath the grip of her hand. Miyuki felt as though she was manipulating a small monkey that was curling up his paws. <laughs> a small monkey, yeah. So Fabulous, isn't it? <laughs> let's just have a look at that, shall we? <laughs> Firstly... I mean, if, if it's intended to be funny, then it's worked. Just have to say that before no, we do anything. No, I'm not sure it has. <laughs> That's not me really laughing with somebody, is it? It's like, well, yeah. I, you know, you it's know. like I go to see a comedian and he dies on stage for an hour yeah. and then he trips over off walking off the stage and that's funny. <laughs> that's, it's not a good show. Yeah, but even that might inspire some kind of sympathy. Yeah, but it's not You're a not good gonna show. You're not going to be sympathetic you to this, You don't go home you? and go, oh, I want to see a great <laughs> comedy show. It was hilarious. We know we were all laughing so hard. What if he intended to do that and fall over? <laughs> I'm not going to throw you out, but you're getting close. <laughs> right. I think, though, it, it, it is quite funny. It's made me laugh. Not as you, maybe, as you say, maybe not for the right reasons. One thing I want to say yeah. before we do any more is that this is, if this is a joint winner, this is a lean year for the Bad Sex Awards. Yeah. When I read this first, I actually misread it yeah. and thought that it had been written as, mm. in, as she handled his penis as badly as if she was a small monkey oh right that's how i read that originally and i was like oh that really is awful and then when i read it again and i was like oh it doesn't say that at all yeah that's not that bad no it's just it's just rubbish yeah and i've got to say usually when you when i like 50 shades and what was the other one i read oh i don't know the, the pet oh, shop yeah, yeah. by kd grace mm. you read those and you go Okay, you know, that's sexy for a woman, I guess, but mm. you clearly don't know your way around a penis. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. But when you read seized, kneaded, massage, squashed, and crushed, yeah. that, from a man, you start thinking, okay. You start wincing, don't he, you? <laughs> he doesn't know his way around a penis either, which is a little bit worrying. You assume he's got one. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, yeah, that's not. That's why I thought like the the monkey thing was like mm. oh yeah she's really bad at this yeah but then it's just like it's just generally awkward I don't know what they're trying to say no, to be no. honest with you see a sex scene written well I think it can be very valid you're tapping into instinct aren't you it's, you, it's what unifies people this drive lust love sex it's it's r- the real engine of society people and it can pique your interest but this has the the most complete opposite reaction in in that it doesn't make you yourself sort of sexually aware does it you know this just makes you you know <laughs> almost turned off massively and you don't want to see a monkey again <laughs> what, what's alarming about this as well yeah is it's french and then they're supposed well, to they be, really ought to know yeah, what they're doing yeah the frenchman the frenchman should know his way around sex i'm gonna so put all my french films they're, are now. Practi- they're practically born into it i mean yeah Instead, we have born into die. His <laughs> penis and testicles became one single mound that rolled around beneath the grip of her hand. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> are we are we doing him a disservice because he's French? This is a translation, of course. It's like, could this be the efforts of a bungling translator? Oh, he's looking at that going, I never said monkey. Yeah. I never said monkey. Where did monkey come from? If a translator Why did read this? <laughs> yeah. yeah, where did monkey come from? No, I think <laughs> there'd be a footnote, wouldn't there? Yeah. <laughs> at the end of this passage. I did not mean monkey. Well, I did not have sexual relations I, with a monkey. I tell you what, <laughs> she needs to get that monkey in hand and give it a good spanking. Yeah. <laughs> of course, spank your monkey. Yeah. yeah, perhaps that's what they're going for. Possibly, it's, it's very tenuous, but it's, it's there, so isn't it? Awkward, isn't it? <laughs> it's worth mentioning. Yeah. On the subject of Didier de Coin, mm. the Prix Goncourt, 1977. Mm. So he's been around a while. Yeah. He's got a track record that includes the highest literary prize. And he should know his way around his own penis. (laughs) And yet, that's what we get. (laughs) I, again, you know, it's, it, it is out of context for me personally, because we've just, I I just know it from this passage. Yeah. So I've not read the book. Yeah. So maybe within the book, it might make complete sense, but I doubt that. Do you? Why, when you're writing this, do you need to write that there's a bulge formed beneath the material of his kimono? You can just write, he was aroused. It's just like, you know, it handles all of the rest of that. And actually, that would be more interesting section, you know, as for for a reader, aroused. I think aroused is one of those words that obviously have extremely strong connotations, don't they? But but Miyuki's efforts around Mm. his... His bulge, yeah, are just awful. Well, they are, yeah. It is, I, I don't think, from the point your balls drop, <laughs> that your penis and testicles can be a single mound ever again. No, it's quite something, that isn't that it? That is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite something. And the the reaction to all of that, is, if if not to just laugh at how bad it is, is to just go, what the hell am I reading? Yeah. And that, tell me how that does you any good as an author when you're a renowned and respected award-winning author to put that out. Yeah, I when mean... When you could just go, Kimo, uh, Katsuro, was, Katsuro was aroused. Mm. You know, he started making out with Miyuki. Yeah. That, that's enough. Yeah. It's enough. The rest of it is just like... <laughs> Oh my god, I'm going to play with this small monkey. <laughs> the, the monkey, and not just any monkey, but the monkey that's curling up its paws. But <laughs> a monkey's a big, a monkey's a, a fairly sizable mammal. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's right. Yeah. If it curls up its paws, what difference does that make if you're, if you're trying to manhandle a monkey? Yeah. If, it's, if its paws go like that, you go, okay. That was curling up its that paws. That makes sod all difference. It's just, it's I guess it's just. just Alluding to the some kind of sensory reaction, isn't it? Like the curling up, or you know, I think that's possibly what they what the author intended here. <laughs> do, do we need to phone France? Say, well, get him on the line. <laughs> phone France and say, I don't matter, just a random number of France because everybody over there knows what they're doing. Yeah. Say, look, we're English, yeah. we're confused by the whole yeah. thing. Please explain this monkey to us. Yeah. <laughs> And they're going to go spank the monkey. It's so obvious. Spank the monkey, yeah. I say, oh, you've read Didier de Coin. They go, yeah. yeah, we've read him. We've all read him. We had to read him in school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an educa- this would be it's an education, isn't it? Yeah. I, you know, you've heard of the list in America of like the most mm. challenged books. Yeah, yeah. And they put the book in the school, and then all the all the mums challenge them and say, "We we demand this book yeah. down from our school." <laughs> this would be high on the list, wouldn't it? I don't know. As, as I say, let, you know, some attempt at humour, possibly, but as a written passage, may be intended originally to pique your sexual interest as a reader, or anything realistic about sexual kind of intimacy. No, even if it's graphic or not, it's not doing anything like that. It's just because you've got a monkey there as well. <laughs> if you take the mess, the monkey thing literally, then you it's, yeah. it's become illegal now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, school board. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to complain about a book you've made my yeah. son read. In fact, he's not slept for days. In, in all honesty, I think that if I gave that book to my mum, she would phone up and complain. Yeah. <laughs> to watch 
depiction of it. It could be their depiction of a genuinely awkward first sexual experience, which we don't know that that's the case, do we? Because we're reading it out of context. Well, that is true. So that first part, uh, up to the introduction of yeah. Marcel, mm. Ross's monkey from Friends, <laughs> up, up yeah. to the introduction of Marcel, yeah. it's, it's perfectly in keeping with that. <laughs> it's not even that bad. It's just rubbish. It's just, yeah, yeah. It makes you go, you go, why did you put that in there? Let's present mm. your version of this one. Okay. <laughs> Katsuo roared as Miyuki gaily fondled his mountainous manliness. <laughs> wow, she said, you're bigger than Shelley's Mont Blanc. <laughs> yes, he replied, and as romantic as Lord Byron. <laughs> Miyuki energetically sheathed Katsuo in his mountain gear. What the f- now you're ready for climbing. Grab my ski pole, Katsuo commanded. Grip it hard and get to work on this mountain. At the peak, they wandered, not lonely as clouds, but together, forever connected by Katsuo's pumping Byron. <laughs> <laughs> I spent days on that. <laughs> That's lost by me reading this yeah. is the exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I've kept the same names, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but I wanted to include oh, mountainous manliness. Yeah, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. That mountainous manliness really, well, the mountainous started me on a pathway down the uh, romantic uh, era of poet <laughs> poets, really, because we've got Shelley, Shelley's Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc which is all about the sublime or in, in terms of reaction to nature, the yeah. mountain itself. Obviously, the mountain is is a, a, a metaphor for the... Yeah. Well, I don't need to say it really, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I wanted, I wanted... So, I was thinking about the romantic, the romantic era. So, we've got Shelley, we've got Lord Byron and uh, Wordsworth. Because I thought, if you're going to write a romantic scene of this nature... Draw on the romantic. Draw on the romantic period, yeah. yeah. And the romantics and the romantic words and... You know, has connotations, obviously, of romance and love and lust yeah. and all that kind of thing. And I'm sure that Byron is absolutely delighted that you <laughs> use his name for Katsuru's penis. For Katsuru. <laughs> I've reduced one of the most iconic uh, poets of, uh, if you like the Romantic period, of course. He might well approve. <laughs> he was no prude, he might well approve. That's true, actually, yeah. because He had quite a reputation, didn't yeah. he, for being a little... For being a naughty boy, <laughs> shall we say? Um, yeah, I just like this idea of, of using the, uh, the, the the poets there. So, and you've so, gone with the mountain metaphor. I, I commend you for the consistency because that's yeah. something we'll talk about on the next. Yeah, fish, uh, the, ne- the next entry into the bad sex awards. Yeah. So you see, obviously, she's energetically sheathing him in his mountain gear. So, uh, I would. Re- I mean, that's really just a euphemism for contraception, mm. obviously. Uh, and then now you're ready for climbing, she's going to climb on top of him. Yeah, so there's a, the, the language is obviously just full of innu- innuendos um, and allusions to, obviously. Mm. See, that now, now you're ready for climbing is kind of Shakespearean in its... <laughs> No, I know I'm serious. Yeah. In, in this, when when Shakespeare does sex jokes, he doesn't hide them away. <laughs> yeah. So you know, yeah. Whatever, whatever Shakespeare you happen to be looking to is probably a sex joke of that ilk in there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't mind that at yeah. all. Yeah, but I think it's just the language. It's just I wanted it to be quite funny, and I wanted it to be, you know, frivolous. You know, a little bit silly, stupid, that kind of thing. I was particularly pleased with this. I have to say. This should win an award for being badly written. It's not even going to win tonight's <laughs> award for being bad. Oh, come on. I've got the romantic era here. I've got three major poets. I've got the symbolism of the mountain and how it works in Shelley, if you know Shelley's work. Mm. I think I have to win by default. I'm sorry, but I really do. You haven't even seen mine yet. I don't think I need to. Because also, when, when you at a more sort of uh, uh, deeper level, this is working at, you know, in terms of... The, the romantics and nature, it being sublime, it causing you awe and, and wonder at the same time, is the same thing as how you react to sex, is it not? <laughs> See, what I would say to you, what you've done wrong there, yeah. is that you should have used the clouds as a metaphor for ejaculation. Oh. You haven't done it at the right point, right point of your story for it to be it's because I'm too naive I'm not that filthy I don't, right. you don't get any ejaculating clouds in Wordsworth you know 
Should in pensive mood and in and <laughs> perhaps you should um, try some that inward wall, eye <laughs> get some more Whitman instead because I'm pretty sure you do with Walt yeah <laughs> so I'm going to read the second passage which comes from Pax by John Harvey mm-hmm. Harvey is a life fellow at Emmanuel College Cambridge right <laughs> I'm expecting good stuff so we should expect good stuff mm. the sort of stuff that we know we're not going to get because it's nominated for the Bad Sex Award in yeah. 2019 so it's clearly not good yeah um, but I just want it to be out there in the world that he is a life fellow yeah. at Emmanuel College, Cambridge, which is not... It's not something you win in a cracker, small is Small fry, is it? No, no, not at it's, all. It's a, it is a big deal. Mm. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good point, yeah. She was burning hot and the heat was in him. He looked down on her perfect black slenderness. Her eyes were ravenous. Like his own, they were fire and desire, more than torrid, more than tropical. They, too, were riding the equator... They embraced as if with violent holding they could weld the two of them one. That's pretty crap. But, to, to give it its dues, like we had mentioned earlier, mm. the metaphor is consistent. Yes, it's, yeah. It's, it's heat and desire, fair enough. Yeah. Very, very unimaginative. There's nothing going on here. No, that is that's right. Clever or interesting or imaginative, mm. which you might well expect from a... Uh, Life fellow. Well, that's right, at yeah. Manual College yeah. in Cambridge. I quite like it's very simplistic. It's, I quite like fire and desire, but it's quite. It, they are the most obvious uh, words to use and probably to rhyme in that context, aren't they? So, as you say, it's, it's not original at all it's, in any sense. It's incredibly dull. Yeah. But, yeah. again, I think it demonstrates the slim pickings of the year that these two are the winners. Mm. They couldn't decide between them. Neither of them are so embarrassingly awful I mean this one isn't funny it's just like you read it and go yeah. that's what you went for yeah yeah I mean out of the two I think the monkey uh, one for me is, is, a, is a much more wild kind of image to, to maybe warrant a place more so in this award than this latter piece um, because as you say it's, it's, it's just it's just it's just more dull isn't it than, mm-hmm. than anything else it's, um, yeah but, I, but yeah it doesn't I, warrant being on there does it I don't know because I think I would give the award to this one. Would you? In, just in terms of it being s- just so insipid and just dull and uninspiring and or interesting, just like you, whatever yeah. you're expecting it to deliver as a piece of prose from a, 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 a work from an author with any sort of track record or qualification, yeah. you just expect more. It's just mm. so lifeless. Yeah. And. Um, I actually think by the time... I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. It depends on the award, doesn't it? Because like Bad yeah. Sex Award is like, are you going for the cheesy, yes. embarrassing, sort of cringe-making? In That's which, my view, yeah. In which so, case, yeah. you have to give it the, the coin. But if you're just going for real pure bad writing, mm. just unimaginative and dull, mm. bad writing, yeah. then I think you give it to this one. Yeah. Because Goncourt, the de coin one, is actually an award for like imaginative prose or something like that. So you, again, if you're a winner of that, mm. but then I'm working with a translation of your work, you might be doing something really imaginative with the French language that we're just not getting. Yeah. And it might be better than we're thinking, and it might not. It's yeah. so hard to tell. Yeah. I, I would think, you know, a translator of French is, could convey all meaning yeah, of the original. There's translators and then there's novelists. And yeah. it comes down to whether you translate the words or the spirit of what's being written. I don't think that the monkeys can have not been in there. Do you mm. know what I mean? The, the translator has to. Oh, they have to know what monkeys. Has to have had. Yeah. There has to have been monkeys in there. But yeah. is monkey something particular to a French culture where they'd be like <laughs> monkeys, yeah. and then they'd watch this video <laughs> and they'd be like, "These stupid Englishmen don't <laughs> understand the monkeys." <laughs> I can't. I can't Whereas, say. Then, there's that. so many questions about that first one. Yeah. There are no questions about the second one. No. It's that's just right. insipid. As you Not say. Only yeah. is, there, is there no <coughs> questions about what's being written? There's mm. no imagination mm. in what's being written. There's nothing there that's original or thoughtful. Or well, I clever. always think they, with this this sort of equator, you know, imagery. I think they. I think they lose the plot here. You know, I think it's too far. I think they're, they're trying to take this moment. It's overdone, yeah. Yeah, it's a very boring piece of writing. For a bad sex award, the original, oh sorry, the first one for me would mm. have to win. It's just yeah. ridiculous. But, yeah, but you also have to consider all of that with the possibility that the translator or the cultural 
differences mm. between us and the author yeah, by yeah. exaggerating the actual issues with the text. We do, and the only way to do and to know that properly is if we had we spoke French or yeah. we had uh, somebody that was French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or even if we compared two different translations, we might be able to find a happy medium. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, going on on what we've got here. You see, they they discussed this for uh, length, didn't they? The the judges mm. for the bad sex and they couldn't come to a decision. Yeah, that's odd, um, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I just think that I I care about both of these in a minuscule way. Yeah. I don't think either of them are particularly bad. I think actually if you've got it there, the worst one was by the other writer. Was it mm-hmm. Mary somebody? Mary yeah, Costello, yeah, yeah. I've got it here, yeah. He clung to her, crying, and then made love to her, and went far inside her, and she begged him to go deeper, and, no longer afraid of injuring her, he went deep in mind and body, among crowded organ cavities, past the contours of her lungs and liver, and shimmying past her heart, he felt her perfection. (laughs) Well, it's just completely gross, isn't it? Yeah, it's worse than Pax, and it's worse than... Yeah. And it, it, again, you know, you, you see all these things on the internet why do a male authors so bad at writing sex but I mm. think that we've got two male authors there that are both rubbish but Mary Costello sounds like a woman and I would have given her the award would you yeah, yeah and if the rest of the jury because you know we're talking about the deadlock that they couldn't yes, make, the rest yeah. of the jury were like no it's between these two I'd be like then I don't really care because they're just as bad as each other yeah yeah <laughs> but I have rewritten yeah. Oh, yes. Pax. Yes. So I'm going to read oh, yeah, my yeah, version of Pax. Now, I haven't rewritten it. Rewritten it is an overestimation because what I've done yeah. is I've used all of his words. In eyes that burned hot heat and him, perfecting such dark and torrid fire, the sultry ravening rode on equatorial passions, fervent needing and desire. Embracing, holding, joining, welding, one. So what I've done there <laughs> is all of those words... I think by maybe by one or two are yeah. his words, not mine. Yeah, yeah. And what I've done <clears throat> is I've put them to a meter. In this case, it is iambic pentameter. And that iambic heartbeat, probably most notable in the dark and torrid fire. Iambic mirrors the beaten heart the dumb, the sex. Dumb, yeah. No, yeah. So you thought ba- about the, the actual shape of the... Basically, though mm. I would present this as prose, mm. it's written in verse. Yeah. Okay, and, and it works in verse really and if, well. Yeah. And if people didn't pick up on the verse, then it wouldn't matter. Yeah, yeah. They would probably go, "That's as crap as his." But if you did pick up that it was in verse, you'd pick up that meter, and you would go, oh, "I see." Yeah, it, it would mm. might help you. It might help you move through the text in a way that quickens mm. towards a climax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I if think I you had, should just you'll you'll display the shape of that when yeah, you on, on. If I had more words, yeah, it would work better. Hmm. Burning Heart, Heat and Him mm. is almost a tongue twister. Yes. But, the <laughs> but, it's, sounds, hard. Yeah. but it's hard to, um, really hard actually, when you're a short time to work yeah. to a meter. Yes. Then, um, yeah, because it takes time obviously mm. to, to get the right sounds, doesn't it? The right syllables. Well, an interesting thing about meter is, is it can be read sometimes mm. differently depending on who is reading it. Yeah. Um, and I like what you've done there. I like the idea of actually use, utilising the original words and doing something more creative with them. Um, but they are ultimately his words. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's his his scene, isn't it? Um, would you have done something completely different, do you think? If I was to write a sex scene, then I would try to do something with the language... To, yeah. to set it apart maybe perhaps I wouldn't write in, in verse but mm. perhaps I would I would give some thought to that because otherwise what's the point Yeah, it's yeah. just not worth it so any, anything you care to write about sex has been written mm. anything you think you're going to do with a sex scene has been done Yeah, and the only potential you have is to embarrass yourself <laughs> by just being awful yeah or embarrass yourself by being clueless, which is even worse. That's true. You could write mm. one character in Trachaic and the other in an iambic, and you would just have that sort of... Yeah. If you had like, almost like two heartbeats not quite mm. matching, and then you could join them. Mm. And, and it'd be like, oh, the two hearts come one. How romantic. How yeah. <laughs> but to not do anything even vaguely poetic with a sex scene mm. is just to write 
porn such as um, Fifty Shades, which is what it is. Yeah. Or to write crap, which is, you know, mm. commercially viable. Well, in that's, an age where the bad sex yeah. award sells more copies of the, your book than a man Booker Prize. This is a, yeah, commercialism is, you know, probably a very, obviously a very important aspect. Maybe, you know, when considering writing a scene. Mm. A sex scene. Deliberately write it. Grab my ski pole cats <laughs> and deliberately ride it in a way that would get the attention of the judges. <laughs> I think that's got that's got to get on the internet somehow. Well, it will be because it will be in this video. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Edit that out. Makes me look like a right. <laughs> makes me look like a right Byron. <laughs> uh, you're a Byron. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With Scott's unwarranted victory, <laughs> scores are level at two apiece. Because we're still Can I like, interject? Yeah. Pumping Byron. <laughs> I thought you were going to interject something useful. <laughs> no, Pumping Byron. In the, in the meantime, <laughs> yeah. I will once again call for submissions of your own work, obviously, but also yes, 100% yeah. of you must agree that mine was the worthy winner. <laughs> anyway. But Pumping Byron. But Pumping Byron takes the day, <laughs> levels the score, so it's two apiece. <laughs> not counting your poetry. That, 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 that was just a bonus episode. I'm not... <laughs> I'm definitely not losing. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, your, your submissions, comments, votes yep. in the comments of this video mm. will be greatly appreciated. Yes. Yeah. Especially all the ones that vote for me. Mm. And don't be alarmed at all if you vote for Scott and your comment gets deleted. <laughs> but actually, the challenge is to create a better line than a pump in Byron. I don't want to go on about him too much, but... I don't think I no, can you're, stop. You're certainly riding that pumping Byron <laughs> for all it's worth. In our next episode, yeah. well, what are we looking at? <laughs> well, oh, yeah, seriously, what are we looking at? Oh, char character descriptions. We are. We're going to do character descriptions mm. in our very next episode, <laughs> which, if you're watching this in the future, yeah. might already be online. Oh, right, yeah. No, I've first. actually got the book down there. <laughs> Okay. Next thing you know, you'll be reading it. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to rewriting. Hello. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was contributing. Hello, and <laughs> contributing. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, I didn't realize. Not thrusting, just I contributing. I didn't realize that contributing was a synonym for hindering. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good to know. That's we do why, know our literature, that, don't we? That is why this channel is so good. It's we so do, important. We do know the English language very well. Every day. Yeah. <laughs>